Hello students. Up to now we have discussed uh, unit number 1 of the electronic circuit analysis and design subject. From this class onwards we are going to discuss about the unit number 2 which is the frequency response. Okay. So the topics covered in this unit number 2 are amplifier frequency response for the different ranges and short circuit and open circuit time constant and a time response. Transistor amplifiers with uh, circuit capacitors like uh, the effect of the coupling capacitor and the effect of the load capacitance and the effect of the bypass capacitor and some problems regarding this and the combined effect of these coupling and bypass capacitors also we are going to discuss. Next we are going to discuss about high frequency response model of the PZT and MOSFETs and short circuit current gain, Miller effect and its applications, unity gain bandwidth in a BJT and PET amplifiers, CE and CS amplifiers, CB and CG amplifiers response and the cascode amplifier analysis for the unity gain bandwidth and emitter and source failure circuit and high frequency response design applications. So these are all the different topics what we are going to discuss in the unit number 2. Let us start with the frequency response. What is Frequency response. The frequency response is nothing but a graph that shows the relationship between input frequency and gain of the amplifier circuits because the amplifier's gain is a function of the signal frequency. Okay, the amplifier gain is not a constant, it is a function of the signal frequency, which means that it varies with the applied R operating frequency. For the different operating frequencies, we may get the different amplification factors. In the frequency response, we are going to get the relationship between the amplifier gain and the frequency. And these gain factors include the voltage, current and the trans conductance and the trans resistance too. The curve drawn between the frequency versus gain is called as the frequency response curve. The frequency response means how our amplifier is behaving for the different frequencies. These frequency ranges are divided into lower frequency and high frequency and medium frequency. We are going to divide the frequencies as three different ranges. Those are low frequency range where the operating frequency F is less than FL, lower cutoff frequency and the second one is high frequency where F is greater than FH and the medium frequency which is lies between FH and FL. This is the frequency response curve which was drawn between the frequency versus gain of the amplifier circuit. If you observe this graph, these frequency ranges are divided into three parts. One is a low frequency range and this one is a medium frequency range and this one is a high frequency range. If you observe in low frequency range the gain is in increasing order okay and in the medium frequency range the gain is almost a constant and in the high frequency range the gain is again started rolling off which means that it is getting decreased okay so these frequency ranges are divided by fl and fh where fl is the called lower cutoff frequency and fh is called higher cutoff frequency if you observe below the FL, the gain is rolling off and above the FH, the gain is rolling off. In the low frequencies, the gain is decreased by the coupling capacitors what we have used in the amplifier circuit. And in the high frequencies, the gain is decreased by the transistor capacitor or stray capacitances. Okay, so the maximum gain is called as AM in decibels. At minus 3 dB gain from the maximum, we can get this FL and FH half power frequencies. In this graph, we have to understand when we operate our amplifier in a medium frequency range, the gain is constant. Okay, if we are using in the lower frequency range and high frequency range, the gain is in the rolling off state. Let us see the frequency ranges. First, we are going to discuss about the medium frequency range. So all the coupling capacitors and the bypass capacitors can be treated as short circuit in the medium frequency range 
because at that time the reactance of those capacitances are very 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 small so that we can neglect or we can treat them like a short circuit the stray and the transistor capacitances are treated as a open circuit for this frequency the output side stray capacitance and the transistor capacitance are treated as a open circuit and there is no effect of capacitance in the medium frequency range okay in this frequency there is no capacitances in the equivalent circuit so when we neglect the all capacitances in the equivalent circuit then that is called as a mid band equivalent circuit next we are going to see the low frequency range in the low frequency range we use a low frequency equivalent circuit that contains the coupling capacitors too in this region the coupling capacitor and bypass capacitors must be included in the equivalent circuit in the amplification factor and equations okay because in this region the coupling and bypass capacitors reactance cannot be negligible so that we have to show those two capacitances in the equivalent circuit then the stray and the transistor capacitance are treated as a open circuit in this range also therefore the equivalent circuit drawn in the low frequency range is called as a low frequency equivalent circuit if you go for high frequency range the high frequency range we use high frequency equivalent circuit in the high frequency range equivalent circuits the coupling and bypass capacitors are treated as a short circuit because the reactance of those coupling and bypass capacitors are negligible in high frequency range okay so the coupling and bypass capacitor effect are negligible in medium and high frequency ranges but not in the low frequency range okay there is a effect of the coupling and bypass capacitors in the low frequency range at high frequency range we have to take the transistor stray or the load capacitances must be taken into account in the equivalent circuit okay so we must show those capacitors in the equivalent circuit while deriving the voltage gains okay the mathematical expression obtained for the amplification factor in the frequency range must approaches to the mid band results as the f approaches to the medium frequency range so whatever the mathematical expressions obtained for the amplification factors in high frequency range they must be approaches to the results as the frequency approaches to the medium frequency range since in this limit the capacitance approaches to the open circuit conditions that's why we have to give the mathematical expressions that gives the same results when the frequency approaches to the medium frequency like that we have to derive the voltage gain equations next we are going to discuss the voltage transfer functions of a series and the parallel capacitance circuit why we are going to derive these transfer functions means we have an amplifier circuit that contains all types of capacitors like uh, coupling capacitors bypass capacitors and the load capacitors etc okay when we have the capacitors in the circuit okay the circuit is complex and also the analysis of a complex circuit is very very difficult to do in order to easier the analysis process we are going to divide the complex amplifier circuit into small parts okay and like uh, input side section output side section and the transistor section so that we can easily get the transfer functions of each section and then we can combine these sections voltage transfer functions so as to get the complete transfer function of a amplifier circuit first of all i am going to get the voltage transfer function of a series coupling capacitor circuit this circuit is at the input side of our amplifier like vi and rs which forms a signal source and its source resistance and this one cs is nothing but the coupling capacitor of our amplifier circuit and here rp is nothing but the input the impedance of our amplifier circuit okay so we can treat it like a input side circuit of our amplifier and then we are going to get the transfer function of this circuit okay and which can be used for simplification of the complex amplifier analysis let us see the voltage transfer function for the circuit shown in the figure can be expressed in a voltage divider format as follows so here we are going to derive the transfer function in s domains so s domain is called as a complex domain after getting the transfer function 
we can replace s as j omega and uh, the omega is nothing but a 2 pi f okay so the function will becomes as a frequency function okay in s domain we can represent the reactance of the capacitor like uh, zc is equal to 1 by sc and uh, the reactance of uh, inductors like s into l where s is a complex function which is equal to j omega that is equal to j 2 pi f okay similarly here the v naught of s which is the output voltage of our series coupling capacitor circuit v naught of s that is equal to input signal v i of s into across the resistance r p divided by the total resistance in this loop r p plus r s plus the reactance of csc is given as 1 by s c s now we need to get the transfer function which means that the gain function which is v naught of s divided by v i of s if you take this v i of s to the left hand side we can get v naught of s divided by v i of s which is equal to r p by r s plus r p plus 1 by s c s okay now we need to take the lcm in the denominator the lcm is s into c s therefore the denominator will be equal to 1 plus s into r s plus r p into c s okay and divided by s c s we will get that will go to the numerator which will multiplied with r p therefore s into r p into c s divided by 1 plus s into r s plus r p into c s that is the v naught of s divided by v i of s now i am going to rearrange the circuit by multiplying the numerator and denominator by r s plus r p and also I am taking R P as separately. Okay. Therefore, the numerator is getting multiplied by R S plus R P. And the denominator is also getting multiplied by R S plus R P. Okay. So, the value will never get changed here. Therefore, the equation will become R P divided by R S plus R P into S into R S plus R P into C S divided by 1 plus S into R S plus R P into C S. Okay, so that is the transfer function. So here I am going to take Rp by Rs plus Rp as K, which is a constant. Here the product, the resistance into the capacitance, which will give you the time constant. Okay, so this constant will be treated as a tau S. Okay, therefore the equation will become K into S into tau S divided by 1 plus S into tau S okay so where the tau s is a time constant and is given by r s plus r p to c s so this is the transfer function of the series coupling capacitor circuit and this is the time constant equation of this series coupling capacitor circuit next we are going to see the voltage transfer function of a parallel load capacitor circuit so this circuit can be treated as output side circuit of our amplifier here rp is taken as a load resistor and uh, cp can be taken as a load capacitance okay these rp and cp are in parallel combination and uh, rs is the internal output resistance of our amplifier and vi is the output voltage of our amplifier like that we can treat okay therefore the total output voltage of this circuit is the voltage across the cp capacitance here we can get the transfer function of this parallel load capacitance circuit by applying kcl at this node okay at this node a we are going to apply the kcl okay so the voltage at this node is equal to the output voltage v naught and the currents are one is the current flowing in rs resistor another one is rp resistor another one is going to the cp capacitor like that therefore the KCL equation at the node can be given as V0 minus VI divided by RS plus the current flowing in RP resistor is V0 divided by RP plus the current flowing in the CP capacitor will be given as V0 divided by the reactance of the capacitor 1 by S into CP that is equal to 0. So, in this case we are treating like the elements RS is in series between the input and the output signal and the elements are rp and cp are in the parallel with the output signal then 
we are rearranging the terms like uh, v naught terms one side and uh, vi terms one side okay so here v naught divided by rs v naught divided by rp v naught divided by 1 by scp we have and after taking the lcm of that one which is rs into rp rs into rp divided by rp plus rs plus s into rp rs into cp that is equal to this minus vi divided by rs we can take to the right hand side which will become a plus vie divided by rs okay so here we need to get the voltage transfer function which is the v naught divided by vi in so v naught divided by vi is equal to rp into rs divided by rp plus rs plus s into rp rs into cp into 1 by rs okay just uh, we have taken this entire multiplication factor and which will divide here so vi will go to the left hand side and which will divide the v naught and then this entire term will go to the right hand side and divides uh, 1 by rs okay therefore the equation will become like this and here we can cancel the rs and rs and also we can take rp plus rs as a common in the denominator section therefore rp divided by rs plus rp into 1 by numerator we do not have any terms rp was taken to the outside okay so 1 divided by here rp plus rs was taken as common which will becomes 1 plus this term is getting divided by rs plus rp therefore s into rs rp divided by rs plus rp into cp okay if you observe this equation this is looking like the parallel combination of rs and rp okay therefore we can treat it like rs is in parallel with rp resistance therefore we can write the above equation like rp by rs plus rp into 1 by 1 plus s into rs parallel rp into cp as we have already assumed this rp by rs plus rp is nothing but a k the constant and uh, this s into rs parallel rp into cp which is a multiplication of r and c components that is nothing but that time constant okay this can be taken as a tau p the tau p is also a time constant of the parallel circuit which was given as rs parallel rp into cp these time constant equations we are going to use in our next analysis derivations okay so these are very very important equations